And uh, he's convinced that, uh, that uh, they actually have a language, whether they do or not. They certainly have a variety of vocals. Do uh, we have a clip on that? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <clears throat> um, the interesting part uh, of these is uh, that uh, uh, people I hear, I see reports, in fact, of myself, I think I had it out here, happened to arrive the river one time at midnight. I was sitting near the river, facing the wrong direction, and something was walking in the river, and I heard sounds similar to that. Now, I was very sleepy, but on the other hand, I don't think I could do that sound consciously. I mean, that's pretty unusual uh, sounds. Uh, Scott Nelson claims they were not tape overs. He worked in uh, crypto or uh, um, in the area for 30 years with the Navy. So uh, uh, they do have a potential talk. Woodnocks are sometimes heard. I know Animal Planet, they put a lot of credence in that and uh, <coughs> that can be as forms of communication. Here's some notes from uh, Scott Nelson, recorded in the 1970s, a uh, 30-year veteran. Tapes not hoax faster than human talk, higher and lower than a human, is a language and negation, yes and no, is used. He was supposed to write a book, I guess he's getting closer, but whether he's really determined the language, I guess that's the question. <clears throat> Physical sign, tree breaks, uh, is one that I found is rather uh, significant. <clears throat> This one, uh, I was sitting by the river by myself, and I heard uh, a crack, and it just says it got dark. And man, what, what could make that kind of noise? It never entered my mind. It might be related to Bigfoot. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, my night vision failed. My batteries were bad or something. I got up, and it was about 75 yards right in my, tra right in my track where I'd walked in. Is this tree broken? I'm sure that that was not broken when I walked in. But I think that's the kind of thing they will do. There's Bruce, we went the next day and looked at it. Not a real big tree, but it definitely would have made that sound. <clears throat> three mile trees, I'll show those to you in a minute. This is three miles from West Branch, just a little over a year ago. You do have uh, stick structures we'll get into, but these are the more tangible things uh, that I have found. Throwing rocks uh, uh, are a, gr a gorilla type behavior. If you look at, at the gr uh, study gorillas at all or listen to them, they do the same kinds of things. What you're looking at could be the reason why we're here today. Uh, a little over a year ago, I uh, got a turkey permit. We live two miles north of town in the woods, and we had wild turkey under our bird feeder half the winter. So it should be a no-brainer to get a turkey, per, uh, turkey there, shoot one. I, I think they, for me at least, they become a lot like Bigfoot when I go hunting for them. But I, I couldn't see, couldn't find any there. But then I remembered, and I didn't realize only a mile north of that, below what they call Big Hill, or Long Hill, and to the west, is a, about a quarter section that uh, the DNR had selective cut, and they left the pine trees. So now what you got is 40 and 50 foot pine trees, beautiful trees. In between you got uh, uh, oak clumps growing. And I said, man, that'd be nice. It's just like walking through a park. I'll just go up there turkey hunt. 
I was walking through there, enjoying that scenery and not seeing any turkeys, <clears throat> but I found uh, four trees that were broken off. Uh, two of them were smaller than these. These were the most impressive. And I said, man, what could do that? This break here was nine feet off the ground. We measured it. This one was 11 feet off the ground. Both trees were slightly over, just slightly over three inches in diameter. Um, I cut wood for heat for about 17 years, so you become a little familiar what different woods or trees are like. Oak is a, is a tough, tough material. Um, I consulted. I asked every engineer I could find. It seemed like a, you know what would what would be the co uh, the uh, force needed to bring uh, break something like this. Finally, I had to go online, and I got an answer from a structural engineer. He said, if you uh, three foot foot spacing, if you held it here and pulled here, it would have taken 400 pounds force to break these trees off. This was three miles from West, West Branch. So you look at it and say, <clears throat> you know, what could have done that? Um, snow load, we, a year ago we did have some heavy wet snows and they'll break trees left and right, particularly pine trees that get bent over, uh, the heavy snow does a lot. I had one fellow tell me, oh yeah, yeah, these, pine, these old trees, uh, no these, you could get 400 pounds of, 500 pounds of snow on them. And, uh, I'm not an engineer, but that doesn't make logical sense to me. Okay, how about wind? Uh, look at all the pine trees. There, there were a few pine boughs on the ground, but not very many. Um, there was only four trees, and they were separate. They at least were the closest two. Just no way it could be wind shear. We did have some high winds. Um, just, just very unlikely, uh, to my way of thinking. A little closer picture of them. There's the one, and there's the other one. Um, bears. One guy wants to tell me a 500-pound bear climbed the top of that tree and broke that off. Um, he's an engineer, too. I, I, I'm sorry. I just can't believe a 500-pound bear would climb to the top of these trees where it's only two inches. You know, there was no hair. If a bear did that, he'd have to leave hair of some sort. I saw no hair, no ladder tracks. Uh, just an impressive show of force in my way of thinking. About uh, 20, uh, 25 paces away is a stack of pine boughs. Um, there were two or three pine boughs out of that pine tree, but they weren't very big. These, most of these pine boughs were seven, eight foot long. No way they fell out of that particular pine tree. Uh, I find often that, that Bigfoot will if they want to get your attention, they'll do one thing, but they'll back it up with something else, sort of like a, a postmark or a, a, a signature. And uh, <clears throat> I call that an intelligent effort for, you know, because around the woods there, you look, there were a few pine belts that had come out of the trees, but these, there were seven of them right there. And that's, they were definitely collected by somebody. This is off a two track. You could not see the, the, uh, the, it, this from the two track. What's the odds that I would have found these? Uh, you know, if I was if I was looking for them, I'm sure I wouldn't have found them. But I wasn't looking for them, and I did. There's another picture of the uh, pine boughs. I found six stick structures. This is the first one I found. <clears throat> uh, deer hunting over in the Rifle River Recreation. I sat down for lunch and got to looking. Holy mackerel! Look at all those sticks around this tree. On the other side of it, <clears throat> just a tremendous amount of sticks. I, I have sort of watched that, and typically you'll never find more than four sticks falling out of a tree, even if it's a dirty, what I call a dirty tree, and usually they'll be helder skelter. These were stacked up very neatly. Bruce actually found this one uh, uh, not too far away, uh, I'll be at next year actually. He says, This might be something. And I went and looked at it. Look at the, uh, this was a cutover just a few years ago. There's no way these sticks or, or trees fell out of these other trees. You know, you'd think automatically fell out of the trees, but they couldn't have. <clears throat> There's the other, other side of that, a whole bunch of them. I actually think Bigfoot can count. This is what blew my mind. Three paces away was Junior's work 
I call that a, uh, you know, a baby Bigfoot was working on his, his stick structure at the same time. Granted, there could be geocachers, deer hunters, Boy Scouts could do this stuff, but uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think people are generally that ambitious. This was another, uh, what I call a stick stretcher, a, um, a, a boar, actually it was a deer blind that had been dismantled. It was in a very logical location under a spruce tree, nice spot, there was two boards left, carried over about 25 paces and put up over this uh, um, stretch of fence that was left on state land. I don't know why I didn't copy the other pictures, there was two or three at this other end. But uh, my brother said, oh yeah, yeah, some fire guy wanted to do a fire and he was drying out his firewood before he has a fire. Uh, there's no place that anybody had a fire that I could tell anywhere near that. Yeah. So uh, is that a form of stick structure? Here's another one. Uh, actually, I sat down on this. I was deer hunting and had yeah, a good place to take a, take a rest. Uh, I really think I do my best work if I'm sitting down and eating. Because <laughs> I was sitting on this. And I, you know, this is a deer blind. That, that's a strange looking deer blind. There's really no place to get in it. Uh, no, you know, usually you'll see footprints, uh, or you know, where the hunter has sat. You usually have a five gallon bucket or a chair that you really don't want to sit on because the ultraviolet has degraded it so bad you're gonna land on your butt if you do. None of that. Two pieces of pine stump which is often a, a, a thing that I found happens. So was it was it Bigfoot? Um, there was those sticks actually, some of them were twisted off, some were cut off, some were beaver cut. This one I found over by St. Helen. I walked by this two or three times. Man, and then I looked at it closely. That's, that's really strange. Look at this. Uh, this was a defunct deer ranch. Uh, here's a piece, or a uh, cedar post. It was from that fence. They had taken down a bunch of fence. I asked the owners, how come you're putting your cedar post up against these uh, trees? And he said, well, we, didn't, we never go back there. We didn't do that. But here's all these, all these sticks around this tree. And then there were a few horizontally placed. That was the other side of the tree. This one, uh, I showed a presentation uh, at the Road Commission, and one of the ladies there was mushroom hunting and found this. I have not added it to my incident list. It could be a stick structure. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't know where she was at, so she can't find it to show it to me. Plus, the fact I think it was on the neighbor's property. But, but, uh, interesting. It does look like a very dirty tree, but, but whether there was places to get under it, who knows. I'm going to go very rapidly through these last three. Hair, from what I've read, is usually black or reddish. Sometimes there are two layers, maybe not. The medulla is very mixed, much like blonde hair on humans. Uh, very difficult. It, it's just hard to believe that, uh, you know, I used to be blonde. Once in a while I'll find a mirror that I think I still am blonde, but my wife says that's an optical illusion. <laughs> but, you know, somehow we've got these blonde jokes, and you, you sort of think blondes are a little different. Well, maybe we are different. Uh, it's very hard to get DNA for, from hair. You have to have the follicle, and, and, and it often is degraded to where you can't get the DNA. Skin, many prints have been found, um, or you know, a bunch. Both the hands and feet have dermal ridges. They run opposite of man. Uh, if, if I remember right, man's dermal ridges runs across the hand and feet, and, and on these uh, casts, uh, a lot of times they run lengthwise. Uh, this is this is what it's called, whatever that is. <laughs> we also have not. They may also have non-opposable funds. They lack the uh, femur uh, muscle a lot of times uh, in here that uh, gives them more grasping ability. Whether they can grasp things uh, just without the thumb and throw rocks and, and trees and break trees uh, without that, uh, uh, hard to say. Blood DNA, uh, often, uh, from what I've seen, it's a, about 97, the same, uh, same as human. Chimpanzees, 98.4. Orangutans, gorillas, 97.7. <clears throat> but it's very hard to get out of feces or scat or BM. It's very huge. 
lot of aquatic plant material, but also some animal remains. Uh, I think they really are swamp creatures. They, they take advantage of a lot of tubers. They grow very abundantly in wet areas. So there's a summary of my 10 reasons uh, of why I think Bigfoot exists. Uh, you, just, you just can't look at sightings. I think that is important, but look at all the other stuff that, that are out there if you have an open mind and look. Why nobody? Uh, they may bury their dead. Um, not a big population. I think Dr. Meldrum can address this much better than I can. In fact, some of this is his ideas. But, uh, you know, deep swamps. I, I swear, when you go up I-75, there's areas on I-75 that probably no human has walked in the last 50 years. You know, there's islands out in these swamps that, you know, you can't really, it's, it's miserable stuff to walk through, I've tried, but, uh, you know, it's so thick, uh, you can't really deer hunt well in that stuff, although a few deer hunters or trappers might try. Um, I quoted Dr. Mellon here again, there's only a few... Uh, the fossils, in, even in Africa, where a lot of the humanoids supposedly came from. Lots of places to hide. Only 3% of the land is city. 6.1 rural resident. There's a lot of uh, area yet, even though uh, certainly a lot of our area is drained and, and uh, got homes and, and like that. But even, even this range and pasture here may include a lot of Bigfoot type Habitat. You got low areas, wet areas, they could be hiding. I think swamp is the ideal habitat, water, food, and cover, mostly herbivore, but it may uh, depend on the time of year. Uh, this fellow in his raincoat Sasquatch said uh, nocturnal behavior allows them to coexist with mankind. A lot of times they're moving mostly at night, but they are seen in the daytime. Uh, they may have two or three times a night vision as man. They are very strong swimmers. If they have the uh, chest capacity that I think they do, they can go a long ways uh, underwater. Um, I've read that they, there's 20 new species that have been discovered every year since the 1990s. Of course, the reason for that is international cooperation, more high-tech equipment, helicopters, night vision equipment, heat, heat imaging, and like that. We're exploring more wild areas than we ever have in the past. Uh, my opinion is witnesses should be listened to and believe until proven guilty of hoaxing. Uh, people just are, I guess, mean to their family. Uh, you know, I mean, families mean to them if they, they say they've seen something. Uh, the people that aren't here, really, a lot of, a lot of my friends and family just, oh, it just can't happen. <clears throat> In my opinion, there's, there's uh, no comparison to the bear, the face, ears, arms, and legs. And of course, most people won't take time to study the history of Bigfoot. They're more likely to watch their baseball and football games. And that's okay. Lots of information. If you do not have an open mind, you will not look or you won't find. Uh, I think it takes more faith to say all evidence is hoaxing than to simply believe the evidence that, that is out there. As Renee on uh, Finding Bigfoot fairly often says, I really don't have a good explanation for this. So we're going to take a break. Uh, Dr. Mellon's coming on at 10 o'clock, so why don't you take a break and uh, um, enjoy yourself. Thanks for uh, coming. That is another point. I'm just talking to somebody a minute ago. If you're out in the woods, carry a camera. That's, that's my advice.